Hello, my divine kings and queens. I'm back to do another video. Um, in today's message, what we're going to be going over is you have a lot of people. You have a lot of people, right, who did not think that um, you would be the one to break these generational curses um, and step into the generational wealth that God is bringing your way, right? And what I want to go over with you is you know, and I know that you guys heard it before is, I tell you guys all the time, be careful who you entertain because you could very well be entertaining a whole, a whole earth angel out here. You get what I'm saying? And see the people that you were surrounded around did not know that the very same people, the very same person that they put their mouth on, that they judged, that they mocked, that they alienated would be the one to stand up in this uh, prosperity, abundance, and success. Do you get what I'm saying? And what people also don't know is it's always the isolated individual or family member that ends up becoming the awakened and elevated being. Why is that? Because I tell you, it's power in isolation. You can't find yourself when you got so many people that's surrounded around you and so many different toxic situations that you're attaching yourself into and that you're throwing yourself in. And see, the thing is, you felt like for so long, like, well, why can't I be part of that? And why can't I fit in with this? And why can't I fit in and be a part of this dynamic and get in with this group? Because God appointed you to stand out from the crowd so that when it was time, you would be able to step into this position of power that he was giving you. And what God is giving you, the, the, the key right here, this is your weapon. What God is giving you so that you will always be ahead of your enemies, be ahead of your haters. God is giving you a guidebook. He's giving you a guidebook and what that guidebook includes and what it details is how you can get through these levels and these cycles of your life. Because see, the thing is when you're in this cycle and when you was in this cycle of loss, right? You had two parts of it because of what God is giving you is this guidebook and he's also giving you the gift of time. He's giving you added time to get yourself right before that cycle closes and that's what happened. Remember when I told you guys, I told you just because he's restoring you and giving back what you lost, it does not mean that that's everything that he has for you. So when you were going through these cycles of loss and betrayals and everything in your life, that was one phase of it. The second phase was what he was showing you to do so that you would be able to get back everything that you lost before that cycle closed. And he gave you added time so that you would be able to carry it out and complete it and finish, and finish it before the cycle closed. And the reason why you ask me, well, why is it so important that you get yourself right before that cycle closed? Because it prepares you for the next cycle so that when you step into this next cycle, you're not all the way behind you're right where you need to be in order to take off and pick it up where you left off you get me what i'm saying so it's always you're moving higher it's never you're here you take a loss and then you get set back in the next cycle because god is giving you time to get back everything that you lost he's giving you time to learn these lessons he's giving you time and so it's just the same thing as, you know, before you sign up for a course, you have prerequisites, right? So these cycles and these phases of your life is what we would label and categorize as prerequisites. You had to take these prereqs in order to understand and gain knowledge in order so that when he places you in this nice, this next cycle, he's saying, okay, now look at that guy, bro. Now, when you line up what that is, what is that? That's an enemy, right? When I tell you what this, what this is, that means you got them in, in this group, you got them in this group, and you got them in this group. So that means that are you going to bring these people to this cycle so that it can set you back again and hurt you again and distract you again? No. See, a part of it is you notating everything that you went through, but a big part of it is of everything that God detailed in that God book. And you say, well, you know, what does that mean, a God book? That means God was giving you insight. He was giving you clarity. He was giving you the knowledge that she was seeking and that she was asking him for. But it was your job to detail it and notate it and take it down so that when it comes time for you to have and go back on something and reference something, you have that, that book as a point of reference. You have these notes. You have these skill sets. You have the resources and the tools that you need, right? 
so that you can reflect back on what it is that you went through and who these people were and how you needed to step and move different in that next cycle. This is what really helped you get through a lot of things in your life. This is what really helped you to see things different, um, to move different and to think different. And this is ultimately what helped you be so successful in the role that God had appointed you in. Do you get me what I'm saying? He gave you and outlined it so detailed. You know, all you had to do was just use it as a point of and go back to it. Oh, this is what I got to do. This is how long it's going to take to heal. This is what I need to use to heal. This, 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 that. As if you had, it feel like you had been here for several lifetimes. But see, it's because God is giving you time. And he said that it ends, these curses end with you. It ends with you. And a lot of it is while people are trying to figure out why does it have to end with you? I'm talking about when you start a family, it ain't going to touch your family. It ain't going to hit your kids. It ain't going to hit your kids' kids. It ain't going to hit nobody of whom you attach yourself to that you choose to love. Because at the end of the day, God saw what you went through. And he saw how you handle it. And you're the one that he chose because he searched your heart and your soul. And he gave you what you needed in order for you to be successful in all aspects of your life. He heard how people put their mouth on you. And because he saw you didn't come a product of your environment because it was so easy for you to fall victim um, and succumb to what was going on around you and succumb to that energy, that, that negative energy. You get what I'm saying? That low vibrational energy. But because you chose to do the complete opposite, you have people that hate on you because you didn't become a product of your environment and they look over their life and they don't like where it ended up and they don't like the mistakes that they made and where they are right now and the detours that they took and they're trying to figure out why God didn't get them back on the right track. What it is about you and what's going on here and what's doing this and what's doing this. But God already made his decision. He made his choice. And whereas people are now starting to figure out what they need to see about themselves and what they need to change about themselves. You have already gone through that. Do you get what I'm saying? He gave you time. A lot of you guys started early. He gave you time. He gave you that God goal. And then on top of that, he was walking with you to guide you and to get you through. I tell people all the time, be careful who you put your mouth on. Be careful who you entertain because you don't know who people are. You don't know who they're attached to. You don't know who's watching over them. Some of y'all got some grandparents that's passed on that do not play about you. I'm telling you, like, they don't play about you. Some of y'all got uh, loved ones. Some of you got, you know, people who is very, very close to you that really care for you, that people may not have never known how deep their love was for you. Do you get what I'm saying? These people are watching over you. And they was out there when you was fighting, they was fighting with you unbeknownst to you. But I'm feeling like for the majority of you, when you come across this, you already know. You already know. So, you know, like I said, you can't worry about um, who it is that's not proud and not happy that, that you are a generational curse breaker. Because you went through what you needed in order to gain the knowledge, in order to gain the wisdom, in order to gain the strength, to step into what it is that you're stepping into right now. You paid your dues with your tears. You paid your dues through those isolation periods. You paid your dues through those losses that you took and you never once um, blamed this person. You took accountability and you did what you had to do to heal so that you can have better days up ahead of your future. Do you get me what I'm saying? You didn't dwell on the past, you focus on the present and prepare for the future. You earned every bit of what you're experiencing right now. You don't owe nobody a thing and you don't have to take them with you. And a part of that, of what I wanna cover is family, I don't know why, and I don't know who in your family, mm. but I'm telling you, you got some grade A top tier haters that are so stuck on your past till it's ridiculous. 
And I'm here to tell you that you had to free and liberate yourself from these people because the worst type of people to have around you is stuck people. And I'm going to keep saying this to the day I die. Because as long as people want to be stuck on stupid to the day they die, I'm going to be stuck on being relentless and letting people know to the day I die. Stuck people are the worst people. They stuck in their life. They stuck in their soul. They stuck in their ways. They stuck in their mindsets. They stuck in their behaviors. They're stuck in their habits. They're stuck in their life. They're stuck emotionally. They're stuck financially. They're stuck spiritually. So what you think gonna happen when you keep these people around you? I'm gonna give you a second to answer that. What you think gonna happen when you keep stuck, envious, treacherous people around you who don't wanna see you make it, baby, but to stay around you is to stay up in your energy. Is to cloud your better judgment. Is to keep working things behind the scenes so that it could see an outcome for you. But when God stepped in and said enough is enough, a part of it was you having to cut off people of which at that time you could not see why you had to cut people off. Because people were so good at hiding themselves from you. Their true selves. How jealous, how deep-rooted that jealousy was. That's why people were so much in secret competition with you. People don't have to keep telling you. People ain't going to be up in secret competition with someone of whom they feel ain't going nowhere with their life. Ain't doing nothing. The very same things that they said you were. They might have spoke it, but they deep down inside they knew what was up. This is why people was in secret competition. And out of that secret competition fueled all this negative energy that they had for you, the jealousy and the envy, because the more that they tried and did compete, the more they realized that they was competing where they did not compare. And I'm so sorry to keep saying it. It's not saying about anything about nobody because it's really trying to get people a body back energy. Why must you compete with someone of whom don't even know you're competing with them? And even if they did, it ain't like you trying to return that energy. People need, need really need to step up out of that and they really need to understand who they are as an individual, what it is that they want to do with their life so that they don't have to co continuously project that energy off on you. Because you never gave people a reason. I'm telling you, this is why I say it, it was never you. It was these people. And when God came through for you and blessed you and appointed you and lifted you up, my God, it just got worse. Because it's like, they got to be the one to break the generational curse. Oh, but they don't. Oh, so what they result to. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I tell you all the time I keep it real with y'all. What people got to result to because they couldn't take nothing from your present. They had to go back and scoop up your past. Like the ignorant, low vibrational, weak, pathetic people that they are. And I could go down the list and say some more names, but I'm going to be nice and God telling me to hold back. But I said enough so that if both of y'all on both ends, whoever they did it to and whoever was doing it is watching, you know that that's, that's, that's a sucker move that you pulled. Because you knew you couldn't compete with somebody in their present. You knew you couldn't scoop nothing up in their present. And you knew where their future was going. So you had to go ahead and result to scooping up a person's past. Of, of which you know they ain't doing that stuff no more. So what the hell is you bringing up for and talking about it? They were so, that's, that's how upset they were. That's how upset they were. All you trying to do is live right. Like I said, you didn't become a product of your environment. All you trying to do is just live right. When a person cannot accept or respect the strides that you're taking to change and elevate yourself, they got to go back and pull up your past. Something that ain't even relevant to who you are and how you moving in your present. It ain't something that you would result back to doing and being in your future. It's the past for a reason. Mm. They did it to cut you. They did it to have power over you. To have control over you. Ain't nobody, even if they sell, we brought it up just to compare. No, no, no. It ain't what you do, it's how you do it. Watch what a person say to your face because they really don't want you to know. And I keep trying to tell you people will play that role. How they was really saying it behind your back, it was to cut you. And it was really to, to, uh, to undermine 
in the undercut you behind your back so that people would not recognize the achievements that you had made, the achievements that, that you had achieved, the milestones that you had crossed in your life. Do you get me what I'm saying? To bring up your past is to taint that. That's how hateful and vengeful and conniving and ruthless these people were. They could not stand having a normal conversation that involves your name about the positive things that you've done. They had to sit up here and result back to bringing up a past, right? Bringing up some past actions. Well, you know, M O D O O O O. And and you know, a lot of it, like I said, they couldn't accept where God was bringing you in your life because they knew that they weren't going to be able to attach to you no more. It's sad, isn't it? People will be upset that they know that they can't go where you about to go. Some of them already knew that once it was only a matter of time that you was going to wake up. And this is why you had people shocked because they know that they did everything that they could so that it wouldn't be you. And it was never nothing wrong with you. I tell you all the time, the devil will use people. It's why you got to be careful about who you surround yourself around. You, 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 I tell you, you could, you could line a person's actions up. Line their actions up. Hear how they talk. Look at their mannerisms. And please listen to your, to your intuition and, and, and your gut. Whatever you feel, that's what the truth is. You never steer you wrong, have you? And if you have, it's because you chose not to listen to your higher self. Every time you try to go against the grain, that's when problems seep in for you. That's when hell and chaos seep in for you. But when you take the time to slow down and to listen, you know what you need to do. And you do just that. And you avoid a whole lot of problems and conflict in your life. You recognize that. But you can understand why God, why God was urging you to cut people off because of what they were showing you. It didn't, it didn't line up. It didn't make no sense, right? And a whole lot of people throw up in your face. Now, you wasn't led. Everybody got free will. You was led. Granted, you do have free will. You could have chose to keep them people up in your life. And later down the line, it would have caused you a whole heap of damage. That God knew was either going to really take you out. Or you weren't going to be able to bounce back from it. He was stepping in when it was the right time so that he could do the damage control. And you could start that process right now of cutting people off. You didn't know because they hid it. They hid that jealousy from you for so long. Hid that envy that they had, that competitive spirit about them for so long. That you was wondering why God was urging you to cut them off. And then when you did, and they took unjustifiable actions towards you, you said, okay, that's, that's why he was telling me to cut them off. This is why he was telling me to cut them off. When he revealed things to you later down the line, when you was ready, when you could handle it, you said, okay, this is why he was telling me to cut him off. People knew your future and knew what you was destined to achieve. And they didn't want you to step into it. Because you was marked to be a first generation. You was marked to be a first generation. And that's exactly what you're going to be. First generation multimillionaire in your family. First generation of curse breaker. First generational author. First generational homeowner. First generational uh, entrepreneur. The first to start your own business. The first to strike out on your own. First generation everything. First generation, first generation, first generation. They did not think it would be you because they wanted it to be them. They felt more worthy. But God searched their soul and picked you. Now, whereas they was doing the overlooking, God is overlooking these people. And when he showed 
a lot of people is that all these things that people were trying to come after you for, and I, I know that I'm saying it, but it's like trying to come for you on, it, people say stupid stuff. Like this is how you know when people talking behind your back. Cause when you go around certain people that probably knew people that, that was close to your family or close to your friends and you hearing stuff, you know where it's coming from. You ain't stupid. So when people be like, oh, well, what you gonna do with it? It's like people was trying to figure out based on where you were in your life, like where your life was gonna go because they didn't understand. Like they, they saw you and heard you talking to talk, but they ain't see you walking the walk. But God say, calm down. And if you have to isolate yourself so you don't feel like you're in competition, you're in a rush with nobody. Cause you're gonna mess up what it is that I'm trying to do for you. Cause you was around the wrong people. That's how you knew people was talking about you. Things would, would come out. And a lot of people just didn't understand where you was going in your life. They didn't understand what you was talking about. They didn't understand how you knew what you knew. They didn't understand how you, and it's because God gave you a God book. And he gave you the much needed time that you needed to make those mistakes that he knew you was going to make. And also gave you time to go ahead to bounce back and redirect yourself so that you could reinvent yourself. He gave you the recipes and he gave you the tools. So many people sit up here and they pray to God about, well, give me this God and give me this God and I want this God and I want that God. And then it's like, you know, if he say, okay, boom, I want a house. You think that he just going to poof, a house going to fall from the sky and you just going to be up in the house? No, he's going to give you the resources and the tools. He's going to give you the job that you need to save the money and the a set amount of time that you need it to get your credit up, to go do this, to give you the this, get the financial advisor, go ahead and do this, invest this. By the time you wake up and you say, okay, boom, right? You say, okay, by uh, uh, December of this time or April of this time, June of this time, I want the house, Lord. But before that time came, maybe six months, eight months prior to, he was giving you all the reasons. You're like, what you giving me this? So you kept praying as for that. Why you, why you keep giving me stuff that I'm not asking for? I'm asking for a house. Then it finally struck. Oh, he gave me the resources and the tools that I need so that I can get that house. So I can step into, you know, and build generational wealth. So I can break curses. So I can do this. You have to do the work, but he's given you everything that you asked for, and he marked you to be a first generation. And you got some grade, some top tier grade A haters in your life that is upset that you had to be the first generation, that he chose you because of how they put their mouth on you and because of what they wanted for themselves. And they realize, they realize now that they need to do the work. You're going to have a whole lot of people hating on you for reasons that you ain't going to never understand. That's why I tell you stuck people be the worst people. I tell you how weak and childish and evil is that to bring up somebody's past because you know what they did in their past was real. I'm talking about left field. So you knew how that was going to reshape and redirect the conversation. And people won't even like what, what, what Will Smith going through right now. One act caused people to overlook the fact that he won his first Oscar. You know, it's like achievements and major milestones that you made in your life. People ain't going to want to talk about that. They're going to always want to be fixated and focused on the negative, on the drama, on your shortcomings, on your pitfalls. Because the devil was using these people and he was laying it on thick so that you will fold, so that you will break, so that you would not recognize who you were because you've always been it the whole time. You was always ready for this the whole time. It was God that was sitting and waiting for you to get the courage, to get the strength. <coughs> so that you would go get up and open up these doors. The devil was trying to attack your self-esteem, attack your finances, attack your, your mental health, attack your well-being. He was trying to attack you in all areas and aspects of your life by using these low vibrational people in your life that was close to you. Sometimes the pain, it hurts so bad. And it hurts like hell. 
You know, I was listening to Aretha last night, and that was one of my favorite songs from um, the Wait in the Hell, uh, Wait in the Exhale soundtrack. Um, that song always put me up in my feels. I'd be like, Aretha, Aretha, I need you to stop it. I did. And I'd be like, why am I asking, you know, and I'll just be like, just sitting there like crying because it's not, like I said, when you make certain strides to work so hard, you, you, you almost have to sit back and you ask yourself, well, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it to make these people look at you in a certain light? Are you trying to just completely do away with your past because at the end of the day if the world never forgets your past if people never let you live down your past the way that god blessing is showing you that he never cared about your past and that it does not matter what you did in your past because of how you changed your life for the future and for the better but sometimes it hurt when you realize how hard people go when you're doing wrong, they talk. When you're doing good, they talk. So you had to wake up. I had to wake up and realize, like, it's just something about y'all that's off and that's imbalanced. And I'm going to let y'all be that by yourself. But see, what I learned was to set boundaries from these people. And a lot of you had to get away from family. But what hurt the most was how... I was treated in my household at once upon a time. I couldn't understand it. And I really don't like talking about that and I'm not gonna get into that, but um, people will never understand based on how I choose to forgive people and still rock with people. You get me what I'm saying? Cause it's on my heart. Um, but I wondered, I always wondered what was in these people to make them say some of the craziest things that they would say when I, I know I was not doing anything. I know I'm not perfect. But some of these triggers that people had is if I was just the worst person in the world. And it's like, when I'm trying to do good and I'm trying to love and I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be balanced, I couldn't even do that in the right way. And it was like, I knew I had to get away and I just didn't know how. And a lot of it was with prayer. A lot of people didn't know, like, before I became... You know, this spiritual gangster, that just, that's the name that y'all want to give me. You know, I was an educational gangster. I was hustling with them grades because I knew that it was going to take me places in my life. And it came with sacrifices. I didn't, I didn't have that, that, you know, freedom to build long-lasting friendships that I probably should have started building in grade school. You get what I'm saying? You know, I didn't uh, really click with people like that for me to have those type of friendships and relationships in my life to this day. Um, and if, if you ask me, you know, I didn't even think that I would be here, but at the same time, God always has a plan for us and he does not always have to share with us how he plans on, um, incorporating us as part of his plan or where we're supposed to plug in and when things are supposed to happen and take off and kick off for us. You get me what I'm saying? But I truly do believe that a lot of things that I was able to overcome is what shaped me and molded me. Um, and it takes power and it takes will to will yourself from not wanting to do everything that you see other people do, to not want to dumb down your light, to not want to stoop down to people's level to get them to like you or to get them to see you a certain way so they will hang with you. Because at the end of the day, I don't know nobody that told me that when I die, my friend's going to die with me. I, that when I'm laid up in the casket, my friend's going to be laid up in the casket with me. Like That when I'm being judged, my friend's going to be judged with me and they can, you know, pardon me or get God to pardon me or get God to give me extra... Like, I realized a whole lot of things that people were trying to hold over my head for not having or judge me for not having. It had nothing to do with me. And I realized that I didn't need those things to get to where I am in life. I didn't need all that, all that uh, superficial stuff and surface level knowledge that people had or what they thought they knew, but they really didn't know. Um, I was really like, when I put myself into something, I read books about it. I learned about it. And, um... When I was going through what I was going through, one of the first books that I bought, well, not bought, I went to the library um, about uh, 
manifesting in your reality. I started going out in the parks. I started reading books about it. I started doing that. I started, you know, so many people say so, so much about it, but really grounding yourself in nature, it really helps release a lot of negative toxins that's in your body. You get me what I'm saying? You're out in nature. You're here in nature. You're part of nature. Um, it frees your mind. You can think about a whole lot of stuff, you know, and when I didn't have all these people around me, I had tunnel vision. That's why one minute people see me achieve one thing, I'm following up with it. I'm following up. I'm following up because I don't, I'm not investing time in people no more. I'm, inve I'm investing it in myself. And one of the reasons that, that, that I chose to do that was because I saw I was wasting time in all these people, putting effort into all these people that behind my back, my God, they were so nasty to me saying things to people who I didn't even know. <clears throat> and it's like, I know that the devil was using these people because who talks about somebody behind their back to people who don't even know them? I'm telling you, it's like he was around people who wanted others to chime in on your situation, on your behavior, so that they could feel some type of way about themselves in their own sick way. But see, people couldn't attach themselves to you no more. So whereas you had friends, family, whoever was attaching themselves to you to get into your life, to spread lies on you, when God told you cut these people off and move far, far away, people lost their leverage. At this point, ain't no more lies going to be told because, see, you ain't around in that vicinity. You're not easily accessible and in arm's reach of these people. He told you get away. I'm talking about far away. I ain't talking about miles. I ain't talking about cities. I need you to hop and skip and go to another state. It may not be for everybody what I'm saying, but to those of you who it resonate with, it was a reason why you were saying that. You was around some real devils or the devil was hopping up in these people and using them, making them act a certain way towards you, saying stuff up under their breath, right in front of your face, lying to you and you asking them for the direct truth. And then thinking that that mess funny, judging you on every little thing. That's why God told you get away and don't tell them your business. Because <clears throat> these people ain't happy. A lot of people ain't going to be happy because he chose you to be a first generation. A lot of people ain't going to be happy. I told you in my other video, these people who are, who are not happy about your success are people that once upon a time contributed to your unhappiness. Stuck people are the worst people because of their mindsets and you don't know how they was raised. And that's why I tell you, please take your time before you have kids because you can damage and screw them up something bad for the rest of their life if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't protect them in the way that you should. But you ask God for guidance, and he gave it to you. Lord, I need to talk to you. And ask you for your guidance, especially today. Guide me until I'm sure I open up my heart, oh yes. You opened yourself up to him. You got closer to, to God. You called out to his name. And you said these very same things that <clears throat> you came to him and you say, God, you know that I'm in this alone. You see what I'm going through. You know that my family, you, you've heard the things that they said behind my back when I was not in the room, when I was not in their presence. You know how their mind was. 
when they just like wanted to overlook you, wanted to gas somebody up on you. I'm telling you, you was around some, you was around some, like I said, some simple minded people that mishandled you. They mishandled you. And I tell you all the time, they practice unnecessary evil when they didn't have to. And didn't know in the end, but they found out they had a clue. Some who knew thought they was big and bad, nothing was going to happen to them. They knew who you were. But like I said, they knew at the end of the day, they know not to try it no more. And they know not to try it moving forward. <coughs> but it's like, you were telling God, you know what I'm up against. You know my family don't vibe with me. You know I ain't got no friends. You 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 know what <laughs> my struggles and my situation is. Let's just keep this real for a second. Please explain to me what it is that I'm going through, what it is that I need to do. I don't understand this. You get me? I can't do this by myself. And then on top of that, you know these people don't want me to win. I used to pray, I used to say that a lot of time up at my house. I'll wait till my parents leave, I'll be by myself. Like, you know these people don't want to see me win, Lord. And you know what I'm up against and you know that I'm doing this and I'm handling this all by myself. Help me. Protect me. And show me the way. Show me what to do and I'll do it. Tell me what to say and I'll say it. Direct me how to move. And that's how I move. Lord, I need to talk to you. I'm telling you, and for some of y'all, that's how you need to start approaching the situation. Some people will say, that's not how you're supposed to pray. And that's, get up off these people that's trying to tell you it's one type of way that you got to pray. One type of way that you got to talk to the Lord. One type of way that you got to do something. Stuck people be the worst people. Do it how you know how to do it. Do it in a way that makes you feel comfortable and more in tune with him. If that's how you connect to God by talking to him regular, you do just that. But get up off these people that was around you because a lot of people are going to try to get you and try to manipulate you to forfeit your destiny and your position because they can't be in it. So you have a whole lot of people that's trying to come up against you and say, well, that's not how you, that's not how you, oh, what, what, what. But if, if it was not meant for it to happen that way and you were not meant to make these mistakes, God wouldn't have blessed you the way that he did towards the end. You didn't realize it didn't make sense to a whole lot of people right then and there. But towards the end, it made a whole heap of sense on why he did what he did. Because he always had plans to make you somebody big. And that's what's going to happen for you, baby. That's why he picked you to be the first generation. This is not your ending. This is just your beginning. This is your birthright. What I've been saying, this is your birthright. Prosperity, you will have. Abundance, you will have. Success, you will have. Stability, you will have. You overcame these demonic people. He was hopping in a lot of people, hopping in a lot of people to get them to say stupid stuff to you and act a certain way to you, but you didn't break it, you didn't fold. And for that, he is very proud of you. And I want you to keep carrying on and doing what you're doing. And I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all know me. I'll throw a whole party. Man, listen, what's understood ain't got to be explained. Y'all be talking to me and I'll be talking to y'all. I'll be dedicating time to y'all. And it's because at this point in my life and what I got going on, I don't have no kids. I only got Jade and, you know, <clears throat> things like that. So I tell y'all in my time, I dedicate that towards you. Granted, I got to get better, you know, with getting out and doing stuff. But I just been busy and I've just been connecting with y'all. And, and I felt like I really need to come on here and say y'all, tell y'all this. Because a lot of y'all is just feeling so bad. Like, you should not feel bad about a position that God gave you. Even when you see people around you that's suffering. Because at once upon a time, these very same people that's suffering now was people who put their mouth on you. And was not happy when God was blessing you and was waiting for it to end. Waiting for it to crumble and crash. And this is why all hell is, is, is happening in their lives. 
Because be careful who you entertain. You could be entertaining a whole earth angel out here in these streets and you don't even know it. You don't know what their purpose is. You don't know what they're standing to do. And by you trying to hurt people, purposely hurt people, purposely put your mouth on people, you don't, you ain't have to be. When all you had to do was just heal. Whatever it is that was in you, heal it. If you know that this person is self-reflect, you know this person didn't directly cause you any pain, any harm, this person will support you in all your endeavors. It ain't what you do is how you do it. Even if you know you can't do that for a person, right? Go ask yourself, well, why can't I do that? Even if you don't vibe with the person no more, you're healed to know that the reason why you hated them when you didn't really have a reason to hate them, it had everything to do with your deep-rooted insecurities. That ain't got nothing to do with the next person. This is why I tell you, a lot of people project off on you what they feel and what got everything to do with them, not with you. But never mind that. God say just leave these people where they at because when, when, when you was in people's lives, they act like they ain't know what to do. They mishandled you. They misunderstood you. No one ever in your life, people who, of whom you love, family, no one stuck up for you how they were supposed to stick up for you because they didn't understand you. They judged you. And now God made you a first generation. He appointed you in this position of power. You be happy about that, that he did that for you. If it was meant for these people to be on your journey, they would have had that act right in that previous cycle. Whereas he didn't give them the time to get that right. Because in every cycle, in every lifetime, these people keep doing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. This is why your generational bloodline was cursed. Because people were not right in their souls. They did things to undercut other family members. They did things to lie and betray other family members. They did things of which you do not know. And it directly had a direct effect on you. But God say, no, it ends with you. Your future is not going to be affected by these generational um, curses. I'm going to pick you to be the generational curse breaker. Can you do that for me? I'm hiring for this position. Generational curse breaker. I'm not, I'm not ready. No, no, no. You meet the criteria. You took the prerequisites. You did what you had to do. You got the educational background. I'm appointing you in this position. I don't need to hire. I don't need to interview nobody else. I need you to be in this position. I need you to set the standard. I need you to raise the levels. I need you to elevate. I need you to heal. I need you to talk. I need you to preach. I need you to reach. I need you to teach. It's not your fault, neither is it your problem, that people can't handle who you are and where you are. Stuck people are the worst people. If that's all they got to hold on to your past, man, go ahead. And, and, and some of these people, I, hate, I, I, I really don't want to say it, but it's like, you all they got. You know, it's like they don't, they don't know how to just... Let it go. You know what I'm saying? To hold on, your, on to your past is to hold on to something at one point in time. Like, oh, I was once close to them and they was doing this. Oh, I remember when I went then they was doing it. I remember when they were talking to so-so. I remember when they did. I remember they was sliding over here and they was sliding over here and they was with this one. And, they was, and what is it doing for you now that you knew somebody's past? Help me understand it. Okay. Help me understand it. Okay, this is what you heard. Okay, this is what you knew somebody did. What is you doing with your life right now? That got any direct effect on me? What is you doing? What, how, how can you... How, I, I, let's have a real conversation. I'm telling you, it was like the pop-up on these people while they was talking and bringing up your past. It'll shock a whole lot of people. And you'll go down to every single last one. You'll be like, what is it that you're doing with your life? I'm sorry. What, what, what is it that you did in your past? Do y'all bring that up? Do y'all bring up that, do your past? Do you bring that up? Are you proud of your past? You ain't going to bring up your past because stop, some of these people so sorry, man. They ain't do nothing with their past. They ain't doing nothing with their present. And they ain't going to do nothing with their future. So to hold on to your past, to get other people to look at you a certain type of way, is doing something for these people. This this, this all they got. So let them have that. But you can control. I told you, control the things that you can control. Do not does not mean that you have to be around these people. And they think that they being so sneaky and, and so so calculated, right? That that you don't know that they doing it. Well, how would they ever know? But you know because you stay connected. 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 Stuck people be the worst people.
But don't let that hurt you. I tell y'all what I go through to keep it real with y'all. So y'all know that the very same people that's mentoring you and talking to you, I am a real human being. Right? That means, uh, you know, this this path, this journey, this anointing, it does not excuse me. It does not excuse the fact that I don't go through things and I'm not going to feel things and I'm not going to hurt by things. That will hurt you when you know that you've done so much in your life. And the only thing that people can focus on is your past. And they're doing it to try to cut you behind your back. Because they cannot accept in stomach. It got their they blood boiling, man. That it's you. And I got a red pen in my hand. They got the, it's, it got their blood boiling that it's you. But it ain't nothing that they can do. Because God picked you. And you a first generation. And I'm proud of you and he proud of you. And I want you to keep holding your head up. I want you to keep getting up every morning. I want you to keep... Release all that negative energy. I'm talking about whenever you try to seep through in your thoughts and in your mind, you got to get up and you got to do something. You got to talk to God. You got to ask him to give you the strength. God, help me. You know I'm battling this alone. Even though you heal these, the thing is, I tell you, it leaves a print um, on your memory. You get me what I'm saying? Because it's like you can't escape the actions that were taken against you. You cannot escape the things of which you heard people saying about you, what God revealed to you. But what you can do is fight every day and make every stride to get up every day and to be proud of the woman and the man that you are and never dumb down yourself. You never dim down your light and you never stoop down to these people's level because it's exactly what they want you to do. The forfeit, the position that God has placed you in and that he's given you. Do you get me what I'm saying? Never listen to a person who ain't doing it on your level because at the end of the day, that's coming from a place and it ain't a good place. If people gonna give you good sound advice, you hold on to those people. If people ain't gonna judge you and they gonna love you and they gonna guide you on what you do need to do better with your life, you hold on to those people. In some of them, you do have your family. I ain't trying to rope off your whole family, but it's those select rotten apples, rotten to the core, that everybody know about. I don't know what you know why a lot of people ain't they, these people even ain't even embarrassed that people know that they got exposed because they they were here for a purpose. Steal, kill, destroy. Ages of the devil. Ages of the devil for real. And when I tell you that he used these people till he couldn't use them no more, that's exactly what happened. But you ain't breaking, you ain't fold. So they doing all what they can and knowing that 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 you cut the ties. And and by doing that is to keep their mouth on you. So let them have it. Don't you shed another tear. Do you hear me? Don't you shed not another tear. Don't play with me. If people don't like you, it ain't got nothing to do with you. If people talk about you, it ain't got nothing to do with you. We've already explained. We've already gone over what that is. They are miserable and unhappy with themselves. So let them keep talking and exposing themselves. Eventually, people will wake up and see. But let me tell you something. Why I tell you release these people in love? Because they serve their purpose, did they not? And trying to kill you and destroy you, it opened up your eyes to see what's real and, and how evil truly do exist in this world and what people will do to you if you allow them. You gain knowledge and, and, and wisdom and success and money about the situation, so be glad. Be happy. Huh? Be happy about it. You ain't gonna understand me. You ain't gonna, some of y'all gonna be mad. Why you, how you gonna tell me to be happy about what I'm about down in that? You learned from it. You grew from it. It would have never happened had not you been placed in those situations and encountered these people. They served a purpose. And God chose you for this purpose and for this mission because you said to be the first generation in your family to break generational curses. And that's period, point blank. And I want you to understand that if you need a friend, you got it in me. If you need love, you got it in me. If you need inspiration, motivation, a life example, you know that you got it in me. I'm your sister. I'm your friend. 
okay? Y'all know I come with that real, I don't come with that fake. I keep it 100, I keep it a buck with you. I tell all the time, keep your hell hell hot. Never let nobody see you sweat. And also, um, I wanna let y'all know that you guys can officially book your one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, with your favorite spiritual gangster, motivational speaker, okay? Spiritual coach. You know, you can book your one-on-one -on -one sessions with me now. All of that information is gonna be in the description box below. I'm also posting the link on the community board. So make sure that you go ahead and you book your next session with me. I have um, <clears throat> same day uh, booking, same day sessions that you guys can book. Um, I have 30 minute sessions, I have hour sessions, I have three hour sessions. So it's all depending on what it is that you want to cover with me and, and you have to help me and guide me on what it is that you want me to do for you and what it is that you want to achieve so I can help you achieve just that. So make sure that you pick the right booking because based on what you pick is what we're going to go over. So if you pick the spiritual coaching, we're going to be going over that. If you pick life, that's what we're going to be going over. So if you pick the personal, it's anything. So the personals, just so you guys know, the personals is like the one-on-one -on -one sessions that we can cover different situations that you've gone through, right, in your life. And you can detail to me. A lot of you guys email me your situation. Um, <clears throat> I want you to stop emailing me. Um, and I need you to go ahead and book the session with me. Okay? Um, depending on what you want to do once you book it, leave in the notations if you want it to be a Zoom call or if you want it to be a phone call. I would say that as you get up and you say you want an hour or three hour, make that a Zoom session and not a phone call. So if you do like the 30 minutes, that can be set up as a phone call. It can also be set up as a Zoom as well. But the personals is really for if you want me to go over with you how you can take these steps to reinventing yourself, healing yourself, and transforming yourself. Do you get me what I'm saying? So you can become your best self, okay? So make sure that you go ahead and you check that information out. It's going to be in the description box below. It's also going to be in my community board. So on that website, you will be able to also have direct access to my book. Reinvent yourself. It's never too late. <clears throat> I'm also going to be breaking down this book and things that I've written in this book, right? Um, this is my first self-published book that I've done. And so... I really appreciate all the love and support that I've been getting um, from you guys. So if you want more information on where to go to book that, if you're unable and some of the links may not work um, in the description box, it is posted on my community board. And you can also order my book on the website. Um, you can also book your consultation with me. Um, you'll also be able to buy your JC Gang merch on my website as well. And you'll also be able to contact me if maybe you don't know what to book and you need me to explain it to you. You can also go to the contact me um, tab, leave your name, your number or your email, best, best possible contact number or information to reach you. And I'll be sure to reach out to you. So everything that you need will be on my website. You'll have all the links to all my social media profiles. You'll know a little bit about myself and what it is that I've been through and what led me to get on my journey. So make sure that you guys go ahead and check out my book, Reinvent Yourself is Never Too Late. And also check out my website so that you can go ahead and book your one-on-one -on -one, um, session with me, okay? And until next time, I want you guys to stay prayed up and be blessed. I love you.